What you are looking at is a Toyota Corolla with a 1.6 liter engine. I'm going to show you guys how to remove the head off this vehicle. Welcome to Bundy's Garage. First thing you need to do, well, first thing you need to know is that this vehicle had a blown head gasket. Uh, I think it ran out of coolant, but uh, I'm going to take the head gasket off and put a new head gasket onto it. Um, like all heads that I do, I uh, just start, think of it as like a Lego brick. You just got to take one side off, all the stuff off one side at a time. And you go to the front where the exhaust is. Uh, you take off the alternator. The, um, no, what else do I have to take off there? The alternator was there. Uh, one cool thing about this engine, the two cams, you can r rotate them by using a one inch, uh, a one inch wrench. So that's how I actually got it to line up. I want to show you guys the alignment marks. Uh, if you're working on a 1.6 liter Toyota. So right there I made a cross. Uh, that is the top dead center on um, for the belt. And I marked it cam. I did also marked it on the bottom on the crankshaft uh, in two places on the bottom. And then when I got the belt off, I actually uh, marked that crank or CR. Uh, the two gears actually, you know, mesh together. Mesh together. Uh, there are markings on it that actually show you where... Um, where kind of top, top dead center is. Um, this this motor actually gives you quite a few markings so you can determine where top dead center is. There's a top dead center on the uh, timing belt cover. Right there on the cam gear, there's a hole that you can see through all of the way to the back side of the head. And there's actually a little dot. Um, if you look through there, you can actually see it. That's one way you know that the uh, cam is lined up on top dead center or the engine is lined up on top dead center. And then right here on the gears on the inside of the head, uh, I have marked it as well, but there are two little dots right there where the laser's at. There's two dots that uh, line up together as well. So there's quite a few markings on this engine uh, that tell you exactly uh, when you are lined up on top dead center. And to get those marks to line up after the valve cover is off, I just use that one inch wrench on the cam gears to move it around. Now I'm taking you down the bottom uh, right where the laser is pointed at, there's a mark on the engine block, and then the gear on the crankshaft actually lines up with that as well. I've actually marked it, and I'm zooming into it right now. You can see I've marked on the gear, on the sprocket itself, I've put a mark, and then on the engine block, I also put a yellow mark on the dot that it lines up with. So, like I said, there are quite a few ways that uh, you line this engine up to make sure and guarantee that it's in uh, top dead center. Then I mark the belt as well, and what I do with that is once you have the old belt off, uh, you can take it to the new belt, transfer the markings over, and then when you line everything back up, when you put the belt back on, you line everything up, you just make sure those marks are lined up, and that way you know that you're um, not you know, skipping any teeth uh, when you line the timing belt back up on this Toyota. I'm just showing you the uh, mark that I made on the timing belt and the gear itself. To get the head off, I didn't take the uh, intake out. Um, I just disconnected the bolts uh, that uh, the bolts and nuts that were actually holding it onto the head. Uh, once you get that off, the intake you know separates from the head pretty easily. Uh, there was also a line for the water pump. Uh, the water pump actually has a uh, rubber line that goes into the back of the head or onto the head. Well, on the back of the head, I should say. And then uh, you go around, um, you get the time belt off. And then you get the exhaust manifold off, um, and then you get the um, towards the passenger towards the driver's side. You get all that stuff off, which is your um, your thermostat, thermostat housing, coolant lines over there. Uh, this wasn't too hard. It was a little bit more difficult than I thought. Just reaching underneath the top bolts are pretty easy to get to. The top bolts and the top nuts are pretty easy to get to. It's the bottom ones that are relatively hard, and then you have a uh, like a forty-five degree bracket. It actually goes from the head, uh, for, from the intake to the uh, engine block itself that is held on by two 12 millimeter bolts that you have to get off. I just took it off towards the bottom of the bracket, and to get to that bracket, you actually you have to go underneath the, the engine or underneath the vehicle, and that's how you can see it. Here I'm showing you that the cams um, have uh, bearings. These are the cam bearing caps, or bearing caps, you call them. They're all marked. So if you want to make sure that you put them on correctly, because you have to put them back exactly where you brought them off. And they point towards the cam gear itself, but they're all marked, they're numbered, and a good, good idea to take a picture of them or uh, you know uh, write it down on a piece of paper 
Uh, what I did is when I took them off, I actually just placed them into my um, parts bin in the exact same position that I took them off in. So, and I actually have this video as a visual reference in case anything goes wrong, and you do too now. But uh, you can actually just take a picture of it and know that you're putting them back in the correct spot when you reassemble everything. Sorry, this is a voiceover. I actually lost all the audio uh, when I did this video. But uh, I know a lot of you guys are new to my channel or watching some of my videos. So if you can, please subscribe to Bundy's Garage. It really helps me out. I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. So if you subscribe, it'll help me that much closer to making that goal. Okay, so here I'm taking off the cam bearing caps. Uh, they're 10 millimeter. Uh, I'm using my Chemo 3.8 electric ratchet. I love this ratchet. Amazing ratchet. I'll put a link down in the description below where you guys can pick one up on Amazon along with other products that I use, other tools that I've found, found very, very helpful if you guys are doing DIY work on your own vehicles, as well as other videos that I've done for Toyotas. So check it out. I'll put links down in the description below. I put links down in the description below to all my, in all my videos. But uh, I'll fast forward this. I'm, like I said, I'm just breaking them loose. 10 millimeter, uh, 3 eighths deep is what I'm using. But uh, let's fast forward this and I'll, then I'll show you when I take off the, the uh, cam bearing caps. Right here, I'm just marking the front cam. I'm putting an F on it, just that that way I know. Uh, I mean, it's kind of kind of hard to mess it up. I just, you know, rather be safe than sorry. So I'm just putting an F on the front cam, and then I'll start taking everything apart as far as the bearings. I have my handy dandy in and out tray that I uh, borrowed, a long term borrow from them, and there you can see I took out one of the cams, take out the very front one, and when I put it down to the bin, I just basically line them up the way I took them off. There's a front row and a back row. Makes it that much easier when I have to install everything. Now keep in mind, if you want to, if you're gonna send, your, well, you need to obviously send this head out to the machine shop. The machine shop is gonna need both cams and all bearing caps to line everything up and to adjust the valves correctly as well. Uh, these valves are not funky, they just have like a, a cap on them and they have to be shimmed or you know cut down to uh, to line everything up to have the correct valve adjustment so just make note of that the machine shop if they're you know if they're any good will need the two cams and uh the uh cam bearings as well to uh to do the valve adjustment okay so right here i'm just pulling up the front cam comes out relatively easy actually weighed more than i thought they would but why wouldn't they weigh quite a bit? They are hardened steel. So I'll just go ahead and put that over to the side. Okay, so now that we have the uh, cam, the cams out of the way, you can actually tackle the uh, head bolts. Now the head bolts, they're 10 millimeters, but they're 12 point, okay? So what I'm using here is a 10, or is a 10 millimeter, 12 point, th uh, half inch deep socket, okay? This is how I'm getting them out. So right there you can see I have a half inch breaker bar and I'm just breaking them loose. Go around, break them loose, and then I come in back with my 3 8 chemo ratchet and I loosen them all up to get them out of the way. But uh, I'll put a link down in the description below to that socket. I actually picked it up from Lowe's. I'm not doing this in any specific order. I really don't care. I know Honda, some Honda manuals and maybe even Toyota manuals recommend that you take off the heads in a specific order. Um, but they do that because they want um, the head not to warp. But if you're going this far out and you don't send it to a machine shop to have it, you know, straightened and planed out, it's kind of pointless to doing this job. Because if the head is warped and you put a new head gasket on there without having the head machined, then you're just, you know, asking for problems down the line and have another blown head gasket. So if you're going this deep into it, don't skimp out and not have the head sent to a machine shop. So right here, I'm getting that last bracket that I forgot about. I want to send the head to the machine shop as, you know, as bare naked as possible. The machine shop that I use is in Riverside, California. A1, A1 cylinder head. Talk to Jose. Tell him Bundy sent you. I'll put a link down in the description below to their, um, to their Google page. But, dude, they, are, they know their stuff. They've been in business for a long, long time. They're not going to lead you astray. And uh, they actually have... Um, some used heads that are already ready to rock and roll if 
you know, you, you might be able to just exchange your old one with their new one. If the old one is, uh, is, you know, is not junk and can be rebuilt. Okay, so here I'm just getting the head bolts out. Use my Chemo 3H electric ratchet. Go around and get all those suckers out. Okay, so I have a magnet there and I'm just pulling the head bolts up and out. They're short little guys. They're not long at all. Actually, I accidentally grabbed their cap there. But yeah, just go ahead and get all the bolts out. There are different sizes. That There are two different lengths of head bolts. Um, I believe the shorter ones are closest towards the radiator, closest towards me in this, vi in this shot right here. But let me uh, double check that. There's 10 head bolts in total. And then make sure you grab your washers as well because uh, they have a ten the tendency to stay with the head. I just went back around with a magnet, picked up all the washers that go into the head bolts. Okay, so the ones in the back are definitely shorter than the ones that come out in the front. So just keep note of that when you put everything back together. Shorter ones go in the back. So right here, I'm just getting the washers that, that stayed behind when I pulled the head bolts out. Okay, so I've uh, got some gloves on, getting a rag ready to go on top of the uh, engine block and just pulled the cylinder head right up and out. This little cylinder head block or this little cylinder head is not heavy at all. Very, 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 very light with the cams out. So there you can see, there's the engine block, there are the pistons. The top of the pistons don't look bad at all. You can actually see the one closest to us, the one closest to the camera, how it's all shiny and sparkly and clean. That is actually caused uh, by, the, by the head gasket being blown. It basically, as the coolant went in there and uh, boiled off, it basically steam cleaned that top of the piston. I'll show you here in a second when I take the camera and show you a little bit closer. But all the other pistons, you know, have carbon buildup on top. The one on the far left uh, does not. I'm actually trying to get the uh, guide pins out, but they won't come out, so I'm just going to leave them in there. I'll put a link down in the description below to another video where I show you guys how to prep the head or prep the block uh, before putting the head gasket on. So there's the old head gasket. It's the original head gasket. And you can see actually down in the bottom left hand, or not bottom left hand corner, but the bottom, at the bottom part of the cylinder that's squeaky clean is actually where the head, the head gasket failed. I'll point it out here in a second. You can see the pistons right there. All three pistons on the right look carboned up, but the one on the far left is nice and clean and shiny. You know, like I said earlier, with the blown head gasket, basically took a steam bath and made that head nice and clean. Nice and clean. I wish all the top of the heads, or all the top of the pistons look like that. But then I have more problems than just this one little blown head gasket. So The uh, cylinder walls. Did not seem scored at all, seemed fine, nice and smooth. There's no lip on the top, so there wasn't a whole lot of wear and tear on this particular block, this 1.6 liter. I'll put up the number or letter, yeah, the, the engine code here. Okay, so right here I'm just showing you where the head gasket failed. That hole caused a leak between the, uh, the water jacket and the piston, and uh, that's where the head gasket actually blew. Sometimes it's between the two pistons, sometimes it's between the water jacket and the piston itself, sometimes it's between the piston and the outside of the head or the engine block. So just keep your eye on that if you guys want to determine. On some Cummins engines, it's really hard to find out where it actually blew. But uh, there you go, guys. If this has helped you out, if this has helped you save money, please consider subscribing to Bundy's Garage. And I will see you guys later.